just a minute. So this is a solid experts webinar presentation specifically about draft site, the 2D package, as it being a uh, full uh, and valid replacement for an AutoCAD 2D seat. I'm a senior application engineer. I'm based in the Nashville, New Hampshire office. Uh, Solid Experts has offices in Montreal, Quebec City, Nashua, and we now have affiliate companies uh, out in Toronto and other places of the world as well. Solid Experts itself was founded back in 1998. Um, there's over 100 people involved, again, uh, Montreal, Quebec, and Nashua. We focus primarily on 3D software, but DraftSight is also included in that. Uh, we also do 3D printing and other services as well. There's a shot of the home office in Montreal when we used to gather together uh, several times a year. We are a reseller of uh, so Systems products, which includes DraftSight, uh, SolidWorks, and, and several other products. Uh, most notably now, also 3D experience. And we service those applications uh, throughout uh, the Northeast. We provide certified training in all our products, uh, including the 3D printing uh, machines as well. And we provide technical support services for all products. For draft site uh, to get dealer support and so forth, there is an enterprise package which comes with the uh, network licensing and that um, allows you to basically share five or 10 or 15 seats among uh, 12 or 15 or however many casual users at one time. Uh, interestingly enough, Autodesk is going to be uh, doing away with network licensing in the spring. Um, our certified training does include draft site. Uh, and just this year alone, we've done six uh, draft site courses that I'm aware of, uh, three here from Nashua and three from Montreal. Um, just a little blurb, odd places for um, CAD software and 3D printing. Um, one of the ones I always like to joke about, uh, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. You wouldn't think it, but the, uh, the large uh, ice cream plant in far northern Vermont, where it's cold and there's plenty of dairy. Um, the two uh, senior engineers have a heck of a time every time a new flavor gets introduced to the plant. They have to redevelop all the mixing nozzles because jujubes and brownie bits and chocolate chips don't all mix the same. Um, so they redevelop these mixing nozzles and they use CAD and 3D printing to get that done. The other places you wouldn't think, Cirque du Soleil. So all the rigging and stage work for all your major shows throughout the world, Montreal, Vegas, Boston, wherever, Shanghai, uh, that's all designed in CAD and, and maintained uh, with a PDM system. DraftSite itself is uh, owned by Dassault Systems, but is actually produced under contract by a firm called Raybird. Um, what that means is you get the power of both uh, Dassault Systems and Graybird involved. So for DraftSite itself, uh, if you buy the pro or premium or enterprise package, you get some add-ins that you can turn on and off as you need them. Uh, image tracer, topo tracer, 3D experience connector, and, and a few other things. Um, you can in fact buy some add-ins direct from Graybird including an item for dealing with point clouds, uh, one for dealing with online maps. So if you're in the GIS sector uh, in a, a block library pack. Also in um, coincidence, any AutoCAD blocks that you find on web repositories and so forth generally work just fine in draft site. Um, that's been a thing since all the way back to 2004. Um, the other thing of note here is that I'll show a, a quick sample a little bit. Um, the image tracer in DraftSite is actually even better 
than most of the ones that you'll find in, in other high-end softwares. Um, and you can absolutely grab a uh, company logo or similar image and uh, make it a DWG block that you can stick in your uh, title blocks or on your drawing sheets or what have you. Also, DraftSite, again, uh, for premium and enterprise levels, has a full API capability for you. Uh, so you can just simply record a macro with a button, you know, record and stop. Um, or if you do know a little bit of your own coding, uh, C Sharp, Visual Basic, Java, or Lisp. Um, and if you do have old Auto Lisp routines, um, they can, in fact, be adapted. There is a cross-reference uh, document provided that converts some of the command names from uh, AutoCAD Lisp to, or a Lisp to DraftSite Lisp. Uh, some basics, it is a DWG and DXF CAD software, um, and the typed commands work exactly as they would in AutoCAD. So if you know L for line, C for circle, all that sort of thing, it works exactly the same. You can type those straight in. Uh, some of the commands as you type them, it'll actually show you in a little preview window the closest associated command. And you can pick either the AutoCAD one or the DraftSite one from the little preview window. Um, you can save as DWG DXF to almost any version, uh, all the way from release 12 uh, up through 2018. Uh, interestingly, 2018 is in fact the latest version of the DWG file format. The application version is actually 2021, but the file format underneath uh, remains at uh, the DWG uh, 2018 uh, revision status. It is primarily 2D when you're working in draft site. Um, there are some basic non-parametric solids, you can extrude a rectangle into a cube, that sort of thing, a circle into a cylinder. Um, when you get to the premium or enterprise uh, plus levels, you get some full 3D capability in the ability to make things like toroids and cones and spheres and that sort of thing. Um, you don't get parametrics, but you do get sketch relationships, which can be a very powerful tool. So kind of like a much advanced version of uh, entity snaps. Uh, you can make things coincident and parallel and that sort of thing. Um, it runs on Windows and Mac OS currently. The Linux beta is discontinued at this point, I'm afraid. So if uh, somebody from the Linux world, like my brother, uh, sorry, no more, no more draft site on Linux. The UI can be fully customized to suit your preferences. And um, all the toolbars and, and menus and stuff can have their, their icons shifted around and, and icons added to them and so forth. And you can turn the ribbon on and off. If you like the classic style without the ribbon, that's still an option in DraftSite, even though that has itself gone away in AutoCAD. Um, one of the differentiators for draft site is mouse gestures. So if you hold the right mouse button and slide to the side a little bit, you'll get this kind of preview circle with up to eight different commands that you can assign to it. Um, it comes preset uh, with some of them, zoom all and, and save, for instance. Um, but it's just a nice way of not having uh, keyboard shortcuts get in your way and so forth. Um, you know, is it Alt S or shift s to do something or whatever uh, you can just do it with a mouse gesture and again uh, right click and shift a little bit and then you pick one of the items on the circle to get the function you want um, there's also an in context edits up toolbar uh, as i mentioned when you type the commands it'll show a little preview with the most popular or, or relevant command in a short little scroll list for you um, when you click anything on the graphics window It'll show this little um, pop-up toolbar with the you know, most common options. You know, do you want to change the liar line style or the weight or the layer and so forth? Um, that sort of thing. And the menu and button choices for those little pop-ups are dependent on what you click. 
it'll give you a different thing for a block than it will for a line and so forth. So it has some intelligence built into it. Um, the image tracer and topo tracer that I mentioned earlier, they're automatic ways of taking a JPEG, PNG file, any sort of image file that you can get a hold of and turn it into polylines and splines and traces of text and, and that sort of thing. Um, it does take some playing with the, the photographic settings, you know, getting the contrast right and the pixel density and that sort of thing. But once you hit it, it works extremely well. Um, as I said, better than, than some of the high power ones that you can buy. Um, the other thing for draft site, that's a kind of a powerful thing. It's actually pulled over from uh, the SolidWorks side is power trim. So when you have series of, of crossing lines or lines crossing arcs and that sort of thing, basically just left click on the mouse and drag into any fashion and it will just auto trim to the closest point. Um, you know, some people used to do the, the trick with uh, fillet radius zero to do that sort of thing and so forth and two clicks and whatnot. Uh, with power trim, it's, it's literally just anywhere your mouse cursor goes is like a power eraser. In general, just like AutoCAD, um, you have standard templates and so forth. You can set your units, architectural if you like. Um, there is a full layer manager with all the freeze, hide, and, and that sort of capability. I always recommend having a good template set up with your units and so forth, and at least three or four good layers. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the layers and stuff themselves. ANSI standard. The third angle projection, you know, our top, front, and right. Do you recognize that if you have collaborators in other parts of the world, um, Canada and US are both using ANSI, uh, but other parts of the world, what is over here on the right side is actually the left-hand view. Uh, it's first angle projection versus third angle. Um, it's as though the box were translucent rather than solid. Um, the problem being is you can very easily end up with things made opposite hand um, if you're not paying attention to that. Most often there'll be some sort of marker in the title block indicating that it is in fact ISO standard and, and first angle projection. It is coordinate drawing. Um, so, you know, direct entry of the coordinates works. Um, again, relative with the at sign in front of the first value. When you're using the stock template, it does default to inches. So if you don't specify either feet or inches or, or millimeter or something, it will default to inches. Best practice from my point of view, and again, I'm involved with ASME and, and have actually reviewed some of the NC standards and so forth, um, and, and been involved with standards at, at Dassault. Always draw to full scale. Don't draw at a reduced scale. Scale up the sheet or the, um, the drawing view uh, to fit around the geometry. Always draw the geometry at exactly one to one. Um, just like AutoCAD, the dimensions are associative to the geometry. Uh, so the dimension shows the three inch value of a line. If you stretch the line, the dimension value will update. Um, However, unlike a parametric system, if you double click the value and type a new value in, it does not drive the line, uh, which then in that case is, is basically just disassociated the dimension value from the, the actual physical graphical entity. Um, there is isometric drawing capability with a full uh, grid, and I do recommend turning on the ISO grid snap even if you don't turn on the display of the grid. Um, again, it's with the, the exit 330 degrees. Again, remembering that your full right hand uh, out extended is zero degrees by default. Um, you can change that in the system options, but in general, that's, uh, that's the standard how the software is uh, installed. In general, snaps are, are one of the most useful things. 
but sometimes you will get uh, you know kind of wrapped around them fighting you and so forth they are push button toggles so if you were to look at the draft site window they generally um, if I maximize this out up here is toolbar buttons on the bottom of the window blue is on gray is off and again it's a push button toggle on off that way you can easily switch them without having to remember the keyboard shortcuts or anything like that um, grid snap you can turn on the grid without having to display it or you can display it fully um, and the snap will go to each increment of the grid um, i usually do not use grid snap unless i'm drawing in iso mode otherwise uh, i'll just use ortho mode to make sure my lines are horizontal and vertical and so forth and the all the entity snaps will do your things like end midpoint center so forth perpendicular to again we mentioned layers there's full layer management um, if you haven't had any exposure to CAD before and and draft site is a new thing for you perhaps you want to you know patent something or, or start into 3d printing or whatever um, layers are the ways of controlling how things in 2d are separated and actually i'll kind of joke this goes back to the old drawing boards which is what's shown over here on the left where you actually had sheets of mylar and vellum stacked on top of each other and you would have the framework on one sheet with the plumbing overlaid that and the electrical overlay that and then the roofing and the siding and so on and so a building would be a stack of sheets all together that's kind of how layers work in, in 2d cad um, you can turn them on and off for their visibility um, freeze is important because it's hidden and not editable if you just shut the display off no show and you do a window select you may in fact get what's not shown on the screen and if you do a move copy stretch whatever you've now affected something that you're not actually viewing so that's why freeze is important lock is kind of the reverse way lock is okay take everything that's on this layer and lock it down so it can't be stretched edited moved etc but still display it on the screen and then of course you have print and no, and no print uh, the active layer is generally highlighted with a green arrow and that's where whatever command you're doing line circle arc rectangle what have you that's where it's occurring um, and that's why again i recommend everybody um, even if you're not doing anything for corporate work you know you're just doing for you maybe you're doing your home layout uh, i can show you a, a, i did a, a a trace of my boundary lines because i was replacing my house with a new one uh, right on the same site and so i showed the planning board uh, on their their map of the lot what the new house would look like relative to the old foundation so you can do that in draft side as well and layers will help you set color, line type, and other things as defaults for all the entities that go there. Um, so that way you don't have to assign it every single time you draw a particular object. Um, oftentimes in, in corporate world, they're named for the types of things they hold. And I'll actually show you in one of the draft site samples, you'll things, see things like uh, TB layer and so, uh, sheet layer and so forth, referring to the title block, uh, the toolbox entities, and so on. But you can name them for insulation, roof, foundation, whatever you want. The most important commands from my point of view, and, and this is just for you know, doing this since 1985, list will, when you click an item, fully describe in the command pop-up window what that item is. So when you have a, a line uh, extended on the screen is it a single line or is it part of a polyline is it a spline uh, this is how you can verify those things with the list command you can show it also in the properties uh, panel which we'll get to in a little bit but i find i use list a lot um, also list will just tell you the, the straight out coordinates how long is it you know it goes from 57 to zero blah, 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 right? 
is it on the, the zero plane? Uh, as it has, does it have some elevation to it, which you wouldn't normally see if you're looking uh, face on at it? I mentioned that you can disassociate a dimension by you know basically typing over the value. So dist is another one that's useful. It just measures any two points you click um, and gives you that value. And most commonly you would use that with the entity snaps on, right? So you do a distance and verify that yes, that associated dimension to three inches is really three inches, not three and a sixteenth, not two and seven eighths, not you know something else. Zoom refocuses and redraws the screen at whatever you've chosen. You can zoom all, zoom windows, zoom boundaries. Um, years ago, when graphics card actually struggled to uh, uh, rescale the, the drawing scale, um, I used to make saved views of the full sheet, just the title block, that sort of thing. That's no longer necessary with, with graphics cards today. Regen, redraw, you've been doing some of that power trimming. Uh, maybe you exploded a block, did some other things. You just wanna clean up the screen and make sure that what you're looking at on screen reflects accurately what the DWG file now has. Um, it's just a, a matter of, you know, just as though you're erasing with pencil on a, on a drafting board. You have smudges and other stuff left behind on the graphics window, perhaps. The regen, redraw just cleans all that stuff up. Um, explode will break up an, an imported block or your title block and stuff into its original line segments again. So line, text, you know, whatever makes it up um, and so forth. Particularly useful when you're importing stuff and, and so forth. Or, you know, somebody else made the drawing, they used a series of polylines. You really need to lengthen one segment of it. Uh, you explode the polyline, get it back to a line, stretch it stitch it back to a polyline and go about your business. And just as a reminder, the enter key repeats whatever the last command was, line, circle, arc, what have you. Um, if you don't like typing list at the command line, the properties panel will pop up um, on the right-hand side on occasion. And in here, you can show what layer something is on when you select it. Um, any of the items, width layer, the scale, the line type, all these sorts of things. And often I will find, um, let's say if I had a line here instead. But sometimes if you do do that disk command and um, the value is something other than what you expected, you can actually change the length of it or whatever by the properties panel instead. Sometimes I find that easier than trying to edit something. So just a pointer there. The blue fields are locked by some other property, so they're determined by the math of whatever's going on for that particular entity. Um, but you can edit any of the white ones. And it's a quick way to, to reposition an object, change it, um, rather than delete and redraw particularly. As you saw, making selections, there is a distinct behavior, and this is the same as AutoCAD, uh, but you if you have no CAD background, you may not have run into this quite so much in other softwares. How you make your selection window affects what you get as a set of entities selected um, itself. So if you move left to right, only the things, and you can kind of see here in the blue tint, only those line segments that are fully enclosed by that motion or that window. And you can see draft site will show you these little perimeter windows. Only those are fully are selected. And if I do a move or a stretch or a change layer, only those entities will be affected. Conversely, if I go right and then move left with my selection window, now anything the window touches, whether or not it's fully within the window or not, if it merely touches it, that's selected. So now all these threads will be affected by whatever I do next, and which could be delete for that matter. Right? Um, so just be aware of that when you're starting out. Yes, uh, selection direction does make a difference. Um, like uh, AutoCAD, you can have blocks and, and use the W block command. You can import blocks and so forth, and you can have groups. 
So groups is another way of, if you're going to keep reselecting the same few lines over and over again, uh, you can make that as a group and then refer to it that way. Speaking of blocks, um, blocks are entities that you can group together and it's called make block, right? Insert block. Um, they're generally also available as symbols for different things. So hydraulic symbols, electrical symbols, doors, windows, anything architectural, you generally find it as a block. There's tons of them online. At the end of this presentation, we'll have a little bit of uh, resources uh, and I'll have some unsigned resources where you get symbols for draft site, AutoCAD, just about any, any DWG editor. And once you make a block, it behaves as a single object. So that symbol, rather than being a collection of lines and you have to window select them all the time, it's got a single object with a single insert point and you can move it by that point. Uh, you can refer it and you can put in as many copies as you want. You can rotate some of them. Uh, you can scale them up, scale them down. And it's really meant for things that are reused. Again, you know, uh, electrical objects, diodes, resistors, that sort of thing. You know, rather than dealing with all the individual line segments, you deal with it as a block. Um, interestingly, Autodesk introduced for AutoCAD uh, the last release, the one before, dynamic blocks where you can um, have a block that has two or three different representations. So say for instance, a door, and you can show the door closed, partially open, fully open. And the dynamic block will show that. Or if you think of like a robot arm or something like that. DraftSite doesn't build uh, new dynamic blocks yet, but it does deal with any dynamic blocks that you may have in a DWG that you've opened. Um, and it will allow you to cycle through the positions and actually use them and, and activate whatever has been, been done in that particular dynamic block. So there is full dynamic block support, uh, just not creation, hopefully in the, uh, the 2020 release coming soon. Um, patch and fill, um, this is how you color between the lines on the screen rather than just drawing bunches and bunches of lines. And you do have hatch patterns for all sorts of different uses. You have the NC standards for your different material types. Um, and you've probably seen it even on, on home drawings of the concrete has a particular pattern that's different than the wood, that's different than the steel and so forth. And so this is actually a little bit showing some wall insulation and some ceiling materials and some flashing and stuff for a roofing company. And all that is accomplished with the hatch or fill commands. Fill is a solid item so you can you know just pick a boundary pick a few lines arcs whatever you can draw a boundary um, and fill it and that will be become a solid color um, rather than a hatch pattern um, and actually the the algorithms for for doing that sort of thing finding boundaries and all that stuff is actually developed by uh, a fellow that's a professor down at boston university by the way a friend of mine as a matter of fact. And you can create your own hatch patterns as well uh, in DraftSite. And so if you don't like what's in the, the standards um, and the ANSI and ISO standards are included, um, you can in fact uh, create your own. Um, there are a lot of resources out on the web uh, for DraftSite. Again, uh, it's, it's part of Dassault Systems now. So in the 3D Experience Cloud Platform, there is a, a uh, swim forum and uh, you may have to register. It's a free registration for this one, but once you get in there, um, it's all you know, people asking questions to each other. Uh, sometimes somebody like myself or one of the so, other so staff will, will answer. Um, there is an online forum within the MySolidWorks space uh, even uh, if your firm does not have SOLIDWORKS, you can still have a free account in the My SOLIDWORKS space and see the forums, uh, look at the blogs. You do get a little bit of the, the limited training information. Um, if your firm actually has SOLIDWORKS already um, and they pay maintenance, you get an expansion of what's on there. Um, if you don't want to go with the company resources, uh, there's an independent 
engineers form. It's engineeringtips.com. And they have space for all your engineering softwares, uh, even things uh, like GrabCAD and, and NavCAD and what have you, um, even just engineer to engineer posts. Uh, it's engineertips.com. There's the link uh, specifically for the um, going on draft site. And if you need these uh, informations and stuff, um, you can email me afterwards. I'll send you a PDF copy of this so you don't have to copy the links down individually. Um, there is a YouTube uh, series of uh, tech tip videos for DraftSite. Um, there are some promotional stuff in there about new features and stuff, but there's other stuff in there about how to activate a dynamic block and just general uh, tutorial type stuff, how to get started with it, above and beyond the, uh, the resources that are in that, the help and, and online and so forth. Um, block symbols, you can go and just do a general web search and stuff and find things like CAD details, which is all kinds of architectural DWG symbols. Um, but if you go to Content Central uh, and, and Blocks, or actually anywhere in Content Central and just filter it to give you information on DraftSite, you can find um, almost anything that's in Content Central 3D wise can also be had as a DraftSite 2D block. Um, so that's very interesting as well and you can get them as additional symbols and so forth um, so speaking of symbols let's see if i have it here um, these are a few of the the add-ins that you can have um, there's home by me which is a home drawing program there's the the so space um, different things, the links directly to the community and stuff. And, and this stuff is part of your software should you choose to uh, install it with all the options and whatnot. Um, your properties panel. There is a design library on the pro and premium and enterprise editions. And um, you can have blocks for um, the electrical symbols, and so forth. So I can have here, I slide up my little preview, everything's batteries and so forth, and um, get them in ANSI and IEC, um, hydraulic symbols, uh, a couple of little hydraulic uh, items, some other just general examples, um, so forth. Got some dynamic blocks, so stair set, things like that. You can have it make a set of uh, stairs at, at any elevation and, and incline and so forth. Um, door and windows, as I mentioned, that sort of thing. Um, there's even the uh, structural steel profile, so all your, your structural steel shapes, you know, angle, um, channel, what have you. Uh, so if you do any structural steel framework um, in DWG format, you can get all those symbols as well. Um, so that's out there. Um, again, CAD Details is an independent product um, website. It's in literally just all sorts of, of architectural um, items out there. Oh, and my PowerPoint is having a hard time. Okay. Um, but you know, don't just take my word for it. Um, you know, this is absolutely, um, I'm not the only one who, who touts the uh, draft site ability to replace AutoCAD. Lynn Allen used to be the um, technology evangelist for um, Autodesk for 25 years. And recently she came over to Dassault. Uh, she now a Dassault Systems uh, technology evangelist. And she wrote for, of course, our blog, but she also did it for the auto desk users group. Um, and she wrote on all the advantages where she found in particular the things of the, the automatic command matching, you know, the different layering capabilities, the ability to have the old style non-ribbon interface, if you like it, um, power trim, you know, literally just electric eraser. And so she found all these areas where um, 
you know, DraftSite does in fact uh, offer, you know, significantly uh, equivalent functionality for a fraction of the price. And so you can find these things online. Um, speaking of DraftSite, um, I did mention the standard pro, premium, and enterprise levels. Um, professional is the most popular for individuals, um, and they all have, you know, pricing accordingly. The um, going to the the premium and so forth gets you, uh, or enterprise gets you into the network license. Um, again, enterprise has full technical support, and uh, the premium and the enterprise plus get into uh, constraints and actual 3D modeling tools. So if you actually wanted to um, model things to be 3D printed, you could do that with the, um, the premium and enterprise plus levels of draft site. As I said, even the pro level, if you just you know extrude a, a rectangle or a circle in the Z direction, you will in fact get a, a wireframe kind of solid. Um, interestingly enough, um, you know, we used the 3D CAD software doing that in, in a matter of a fraction of a second. Uh, I used to, uh, when I teach the essentials class, show uh, 24 pages of instructions of doing that in the early uh, uh, 3D CAD systems on computer vision CAD 4X, for instance, back in the day. And I open up the microphones here for just a moment. Does anyone have any particular questions at this point? Can you hear me? Now I do. Okay, excellent. Um, so, I mean, I, I do, I, I use the AutoCAD or have used in the past AutoCAD just for doing patent drawings. So we're not talking about anything, you know, super precision. I don't need a lot of features, um, but um, it looked like the, the base model, which was about $99 a year. Yep. Um, it doesn't do that power erase, which that, that looks pretty cool. Um, am I correct or? Uh, good question, actually. Ah, the power trim, yes. Yeah, power trim. Ah. Because I don't yeah. need tools, I don't need, you know, a lot of these other things, but the power trim looked like it was um, a pretty intriguing kind of a thing. Although, you know, the amount of times I'd use it, I don't know whether it would be worth it or not. I mean, I, you know. Well, the other thing that might be useful for you is, is the image tracer functionality as well. Um, okay, I'm not familiar with that. Um, so you know. what that looks like, so let's say this is a company logo that actually Flipped it from their website, right? Right, and brought it in, and now it's a DWG block. It's an actual block that I can move and and converted the image into lines and arcs and things that they then could use that uh, that solid fill on to basically make a a real DWG entity out of it. The advantage being is then you're not uh, cluttering your file. Um, with images. So DWGs on disk will be very small relatively right. until you do something like that, like stick an image in it or a spreadsheet or something of that nature. And then the file size balloons accordingly. Okay. You know, if you were looking at the difference between a, a, a premium and a standard draft site, both of those functions combined might be worth the trouble. Okay, and do I just contact you guys to, to order it, or how, how does that go? Um, for the standard pro and premium, you can order through us, or you can just go directly to the website. Where you do have to order through us is the enterprise. Even if you try to go through the website for that, they'll just redirect you to us anyway. Okay. And the enterprise being, it's five packs of company seats. Um, and like I said, it comes with the network license tool which allows you to 
you know, have three people sharing one seat, five people sharing two seats, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I would only be interested in the, you know, the base model uh, or possibly the pro. Um, yeah, the standard of the pro. Uh, you know, I, I'm just, you know, a, a sole individual, um, you know, doing this work. So um, just out of curiosity, if I have if I have multiple computers, um, is there a way I can have this on both computers? Well, that's yeah, that's where the enterprise comes in with the, that floating network license. That's what that allows. I'm sorry. Okay. So in other words, I would have to have, you know, this on a dedicated computer that I'd only be able to use this on on the one computer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean that's not a big deal actually for me, but um I was just curious. Um, yeah, and in the 3D CAD software, we have some other options, but I, I don't think any of those apply to just the standard draft site seat. Right. Okay. And so, in other words, I could just order it on the website. Um, you know, my, my thinking is I'm probably just going to do the basic because that's kind of like what I'm used to, and I'll get used to it. And then at, at such point, I might upgrade to Pro, you know, some months down the line after I get used to it. Um, and and that's just, you know, every year I'm, I'm paying the $99 and I guess it gets billed to a card or something. You guys just ping it every year or something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they usually uh, send you a reminder email 60 days out. Okay. You know, that sort of thing. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, I would just go um, on the whatever the draft site website and, and order it. Yeah, you can do that directly. Um, if you just Google draftsite.com or whatever, you'll, you'll land on this page I'm showing here. Um, OK. And you just purchase that directly. I mean, you can go to our website, but it, uh, it doesn't doesn't make any difference that way. Um, uh, well, you, I mean, you guys spent it. you spent the time showing this to me. I'd rather buy it from you through you guys so that you get whatever small amount you might get. But um, yeah, I don't know um, if if we get anything on, on that. On that. Okay. <laughs> All right. The um, other fellow, William, did you have a question? You raised your hand for a second. No, I don't have any question. That's fine. I just okay. wanted you to know generally what it is. Okay. Uh, are, are you are you at least a little more aware now? You understand that it's a. Yeah, a yeah. Time. I will. I will look for it uh, later on. Okay. Um, Thank you sorry, for your presentation. Yeah. It it Thank seems you. very easy to use. It it's. It, it takes practice. I mean, I've been doing it, like I said, since 1985, so I'm, I'm kind of used to it. Um, the biggest thing is just getting used to, you know, um, you know, if I say line or something or whatever. Right? It's going to default to this coordinate bit, and you actually type in 0, 0, you know, 2, whatever. Here. You can click and drag like this, yeah. and now you have to rely on the entity snaps and other things. Oh. Like if you hit if you hit F8, it'll go to to orthogonal. Right. Okay, so it's it's just like I'm using AutoCAD. I I've got the same sort of keystroke commands too. Yeah. So that's um. Yeah. That I mean, if you don't know your CAD history at all, the IntelliCAD consortium. <laughs> was spun out in the early 2000s years ago um, and they basically developed this uh, based on an AutoCAD uh, competitor that, that Microsoft bought and then didn't want anything to do with. Uh, um, and that's the basis of all these other clone products. So Graybert, uh, Brixis, um, there's, a, there's an actual IntelliCAD that's out there. All those other, you know, AutoCAD workalikes—they're all built on this other engine. Um, 
that Microsoft got when they acquired some company uh, back at around 2000 and didn't didn't want to bother with them. Huh. Okay. Well, to, so, to yeah. all that's detriment, right? Uh, unfortunately, yeah. Um, you know, it just it's a little competition in the market space, I guess. Okay. All right. Well, I really appreciate your uh, your help here. I, I mean, I do have to say there, in terms of uh, resources online, because I've been looking mm -hmm. um, for understanding what draft site really is and what the different levels do or don't do kind of a thing. Um, it sort of tells it, but it doesn't tell it like how you did here. Um, so it's a that's a it's a big help seeing this. Uh, you know, that's you're providing exactly what I was looking for. Oh, very good. Um, and like I said, if you want a PDF copy of this, I can send it to you afterwards, and you, the links will be live in the PDF copy. Okay, that would that would actually be terrific. Um, so your web your uh, email address is um, J Nolan. Um, so while we're wrapping up here, and we're solid experts, we cover the northeast corner of the continent. Thank you very much. Even way the heck out there. <laughs> These are uh -huh. customer dots, by the way, <clears throat> along with the polar bears and the miners, um, based from Montreal and so forth. Um, but yeah, J N O L I N at solid experts, no E. Okay, excellent. I will. Uh, I'll pop you an email. Um, and uh, thank you very much. I really thank appreciate you very it. much. I have um, to go now. Thank okay. You.